Disclaimer, I'm not a huge Godzilla or Kaiju fan. You could barely call me a casual. I've seen the original 1954 one that was just called Godzilla for obvious reasons. The Matthew Broderick one that everyone hated, but I was a dumb kid and just loved it that was just called Godzilla. The one that was just called Godzilla with Brian Cranston, and for some reason, Godzilla vs. Megalon? Godzilla Inc. really needs to step up their naming conventions, because most of them are Godzilla vs. Some Threat, and all the American ones are just doing the bad thing and naming the sequels and reboots after themselves. Why are Western companies so bad at names? And, of course, I saw Shin Godzilla. Speaking of which, you've already seen the title of the video, so you at least have a vague idea of what it's about. When I talked to my friends about it, they always got hung up on the Shin part. Why Shin? Like a leg? What does that have to do with Godzilla? I, probably like most Japanese, assumed that the Shin meant new, like what they called every Super Nintendo game instead of Super whatever. However, Japanese is a complex language with many homonyms, sometimes going into the dozens. And that's why kanji, the intimidating and needlessly complicated looking parts of the Japanese alphabet, are a necessary evil, with, for example, 227 kanji that can be read as shin. Without a kanji there to tell you what a word means, you can only grasp the meaning through context. Most of those kanji are used only in names and historical context, but there are still a ton of ways to interpret it. It's no accident that the title is written in katakana, a phonetic alphabet, one that tells you how to pronounce the words and not what they mean, specifically the version used for foreign words or for emphasis, kind of like the English equivalent of bold or italics. Everyone knows what Godzilla is, roughly speaking, so what does the shin mean? It's intentionally left ambiguous, with the meaning open to interpretation. As I said earlier, the obvious conclusion is that it means new. It's not only a new movie, but it's the first Japanese movie to break continuity and reboot it, while the American movies have had a different Godzilla with every incarnation, similar to something like Batman. Japanese Godzilla has essentially been the same character for 63 years, just with a new rubber suit every so often. Kinda like the equivalent of James Bond. He's still the same guy, but with a different actor. In Shin Godzilla, he comes with a new set of designs, though partially based on the original ones, skills, powers, and something that roughly approaches motivations. Every aspect can definitely be considered new in terms of the monster himself. You might also consider this one to be the true version. Instead of two monsters wrestling, it focuses more on the people involved with taking him down. The original 1954 movie was definitely a reaction to the atomic bomb during World War II, and the societal fears that were a result of that. It focused on Godzilla's sheer destructive potential, and to a lesser extent, how society dealt with that as a general fear of the lasting effects of radiation damage. Later movies had him battling other kaiju when he went back and forth between destruction incarnate and savior of mankind. So Shin Godzilla is also the true Godzilla in that he's very similar to the original movie. Walking destruction that emerges from the ocean caused by radiation related malfiescence and essentially invincible to all conventional weapons. One of the Japanese criticisms of the 1998 American movie was that Godzilla saw a threat, albeit not much, in the tiny helicopters and planes circling him. Shusuke Kaneko, director of some of the Japanese movies of around the same time period, remarked, Americans seem unable to accept a creature that cannot be put down by their arms. In other words, the true Godzilla inspires and requires not only fear and destruction, but also humility. Shin Godzilla is unique in that it focuses less on Godzilla as a monster and more as an allegory for natural disasters and how people would respond to that. 
Throughout history, Japan has been plagued by earthquakes, tsunamis, typhoons, the odd volcano, and of course, the only nuclear weapons to be used against people. Japanese society takes this seriously when it comes to their fiction, and things like TV shows that portray events resembling recent reality can get delayed or even outright cancelled. There's a lot of cultural sensitivity and a feeling of solidarity against natural disasters and even the rare incidents of violence. Going back to the true interpretation, characters are introduced at an intentionally overwhelming rate. And if you can remember who even a third of the vice secretaries of the minister of whatevers are, color me impressed. You can call this the true Godzilla and that if something like that actually happened, it would be overwhelmed by bureaucracy to the point of non-functionality. I actually really liked the sort of ground level approach it took, focusing more on the reaction of the events and less on the monster. You also get to see what's going on through the minds of the soldiers on the ground, and the fear that they experience when their attacks do nothing. Seeing through their lens gives you a totally different feeling than seeing the tiny dots of helicopters that obviously aren't going to do anything. The hesitation of an individual person as he sees a civilian as possible collateral damage and has to wait for the order to go all the way through the chain of command and the weight of that decision is truly tense. I think that this individual human level empathy or lack of it is what makes Shin Godzilla stand apart from the rest. And speaking of which, in another first for the franchise, they acknowledge the difference in the Japanese Gojira pronunciation as opposed to the American Godzilla. The movie is a bit convoluted with the naming, but somehow manages to get the points across in both languages. The English name comes out first in popularity as Godzilla, with the god meaning god and the zilla meaning... I don't know, but... But Goromaki, the guy with the boat, came up with the name Gojira first, based on his home island's name meaning Incarnation of God. In either case, Shin, meaning God, is very relevant here and definitely intentional. Finally, evolution. When I heard that Hideaki Anno of Neon Genesis Evangelion fame was going to be the man behind this, I set my expectations pretty high. But then Godzilla's first appearance happened and I actually laughed. It looked pretty dumb, but little did I know that that wasn't close to his final form. He continues to evolve into more and more powerful, larger and larger versions over the course of the movie, ending at the biggest Godzilla ever! His destruction of anything that threatens him, or simply gets in his way, with devastating and seemingly effortless power during his later forms, is a far cry from his goofy, almost floppy, fish-out-of-water performance at the beginning, his rapid evolution is something that the professional board of scientists deems impossible, and yet it happens. Obviously, with 227 different meanings of a word, you'll inevitably find some meaning in it somewhere, no matter how far of a reach it is. This is a kind of a postmodern approach to it, where there's no real answer to which one is the right meaning, or it could be all of them or none, but I think I've at least hit on something like solid ground, if not some intentional design. Still, it's interesting both from a linguistic and narrative standpoint just how many completely different variants of the word that fit the themes of the movie you can get from the same one simple pronunciation. This is why translation is more of an art than a science, particularly in Japanese. And it explains how one piece of content can have so many vastly different translations. Now, thanks for watching my boring video about sociolinguistic extrapolation. For any Japanese speakers out there, feel free to leave a comment if I missed something, got a conceptual ideograph wrong, and if anyone has anything to add, especially cultural context or general kaiju knowledge, Show me what you got. Like this video if you liked it, and subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time, I'll see you around.